Greetings and salutations, Passpoint here. I'm going to show you some things that I've picked up uh, within the last couple of months at WonderCon uh, and Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and some uh, CGC comic books. First up is the one item, um, I picked up other items before at WonderCon, but I, re I already showed them. Uh, this one item that I picked up at WonderCon, I'm going to show you in a second. I will be right back. Okay, this is the first item I picked up at uh, WonderCon in Anaheim earlier this year. It's by uh, an artist, uh, Jason Metcalf. As you can see, it's a uh, Marvel um, drawing per se. Uh, you can see Magneto, let me make it a little bit closer. Right there, and there's Cerebro, Wolverine's claws, Cyclops' uh, visor, there he has uh, captured Phoenix, uh, Jean Grey. And there's the head of a sentinel. If I pull back a little bit, you can see uh, Angel's wings, as he also has as a trophy. Uh, one right there, and the other one right there. I just like this artwork. And uh, you know the artist was there and he was selling them. It's, it's not a print exactly, it's made out of aluminum. If I get a little bit closer, uh, you can hear when I move it. So it's a different type of material, which I found uh, very cool. So I, uh, I picked this up at uh, WonderCon, and I will be right back and I'll show you what I got at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Okay, this is the first item. Uh, these are all Star Wars related items that I picked up at a San Diego Comic-Con. And I'll show you the rest of the items that I picked up at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, but first I figured I'd show you the Star Wars ones. Uh, this is R2-D2. And uh, this is the, the iconic scene where uh, Princess Leia comes out on the hologram uh, speaking to Obi-Wan Kenobi. This would normally light up, but uh, I let the battery run on it and I can't. Basically, the head right here flashes all the lights that R2-D2, uh, they usually come on. You see his extended arm right here and all those other compartments. And this is the uh, hologram of uh, Princess Leia. This one does light up, as you can see right there. So at night, it's pretty cool when I turn on the lights. You can see the it really sticks out the uh, Princess Leia and the R2-D2. I wish the lights were working, but I let the battery on and you know have to replace the battery, which I haven't done. Next items up uh, that I got from uh, San Diego Comic Con, Star Wars related. This is the uh, Star Wars, the Black Series of the uh, Stormtrooper. This is just a box. And the actual item is right here. Get a little bit closer for you. I haven't taken it out of the box. I don't know if I ever will. I like the way it looks like this. You see his gun there and uh, a bigger gun right there. Star Wars. And there's a Stormtrooper. Next items I picked up. Uh, I got three of them. I have one at work. These are Star Wars Hot Wheels. Get a little bit closer here. Once again, I, I haven't taken it out of the box. Uh, I like the covers, the way they look. So it's pretty cool. I bought three of these. Nice, I got one at work. And uh, here's the last one. Same thing. Next item I picked up at uh, the con was there was this, there's an artist there called Todd Nock and uh, I was wanting to get one of his uh, commissions. First thing in preview night, uh, I had him, I went to his place and I had a blank cover of Star Wars and uh, he colored this and um, it came out really nice. Obviously it's Princess Leia. Really nice guy, if you ever have a chance to talk to him, he goes to a lot of comic book conventions, you know, he really seems to be a big fan and you know, very affable person and always seems happy to speak to uh, people about comic books. And I got one more item for Star Wars. I have it and I'll be right back. Okay, um, during uh, saying the Comic-Con, one of the panels had to do with Star Wars, obviously. J.J. Abrams was there and all the actors. Uh, Carrie Fisher was there, Mark Hamill, and actually uh, Harrison Ford showed up too which was cool and um, they obviously talked about the new movie that's coming out, they showed some behind the scenes of the movie and at the end of the panel, J.J. Uh, Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy was there also, J.J. Uh, Abrams came up to 
asked the panel how many of us like uh, Star Wars music, how many of us would like to go to a concert, and right after the panel, they gave some free passes, as you can see right here, uh, down by the bay in San Diego to go see a uh, Star Wars concert by the uh, San Diego Symph Symphony. Um, couldn't resist. It was the end of the day. I was tired. Uh, my family, we were all tired. But, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And um, they also gave away, um, as you can see, this uh, free lightsaber to everybody who was there. And it's also got the uh, Star Wars emblem right there. It says 1976 to 2015. And, yep, it turns on. You can see it right there. Makes a noise like you're fighting. <laughs> So it was a cool thing to get at the end of the um, concert, or right before the concert, I should say. And I will be right back with a couple of more things. I have one uh, more model and then my uh, CGC comic books. Okay, um, I picked these up. Um, I ordered them over a year ago. Uh, it's uh, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. You can see right there. A little bit closer. You see he's looking at his hand or from the movie, remember his hand started glowing and he did the protective shield to save everybody's life or to show off the light, I should say. This was through Gentle Giant. It took a long time to get here. Um, ordered it over a year ago and it came in a couple months ago. And it also came with these uh, baby Groots. Let me turn it around if I can see it. You can see his face. Here we go. There's one. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it's in focus. And same one, but uh, he has his hands here. See it right there? And I'll put them side to side. Right there is the both of them. So yeah, I'm into models too, obviously. And uh, I'll show you the rest of the stuff that I got from uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Okay, here's the rest of my pickups from uh, San Diego Comic-Con. This is a Legos exclusive, it's DC Superheroes. Uh, you can see, if anybody knows about Action Comics number one, this is an iconic comic book, uh, like the, one of the holy grails of all comic books, and it's the scene where uh, Superman is lifting up a car. You can see the uh, San Diego Comic Con emblem right there. A little history about what, you know, what it is. This is a synopsis of the uh, Says you hold in your hand a Lego DC Superhero San Diego Comic Con exclusive, Action Comics number one. Don't know if I'll ever open it. I probably will one of these days to display it, but right now I'm just keeping it in the box. Uh, next item up is Supergirl. If any of you were fans from uh, Justice League Unlimited and Cartoon Network, this was the uh, the way the character was drawn. Next item is, I got this troll for free at Comic-Con, they were just handing them out, and I just decided to pick one up right here. My last item that I picked up at San Diego Comic-Con, I really had to work for this one. Basically, um, it's a flask uh, from the, uh, I think, yeah, History Channel, uh, Vikings. You had to go through their panel and you had to earn this. They put you in a booth and they covered you up like in a cloth, like uh, in that era. And you had to hit like this drum, like you were beating on a, a big uh, stump of wood. And the harder you hit it, um, it would film you. And then the uh, blood would spurt out from the screen and cover you in blood, your face. And uh, of course you were covered up and that's the way you earned this flask. And um, actually even made a video of you in a slow motion, hitting the drums and blood coming at you. So, <laughs> like I said, this uh, flask was uh, well earned. And I will be right back with my comic books. Okay, uh, next up is all the recent comic books. I've had CGC and I just got them. All of them like was in the last month or two. First one is Avengers Annual Number 10. It's the very first appearance of uh, Rogue. This is from uh, back. Uh, this is from my own collection that I bought back in 1981. I just decided to get it signed by uh, Stan Lee and uh, Chris Claremont. 
Make it a little bit closer so you can see their signatures, hopefully. Excuse me for the glare. Stanley's right there, and uh, Chris Claremont's right there. Most all of these are signed by Stanley and Chris Claremont. This one is Secret Wars number one. If you collect comic books, you are aware that this is ongoing series right now. It's the end of the uh, Marvel Universe as we know it. As you can see, there's Spider-Man right there, and he's um, holding onto a tombstone that says Marvel Universe 1961 to 2015. The Marvel Universe is, uh, is ending. This is basically a uh, homage to uh, Daredevil number 182. Uh, if you remember that comic book cover, he was you know on a tombstone, but uh, Electra's name was down there. And you can see Stan Lee's uh, signature right there. Next one is the same comic book, but uh, it's in black and white. It's a variant. Both of these are variants. Uh, I see Secret Wars, Spider-Man, and Stan Lee's signature is at the very bottom. This one you may be able to see a little bit better. It's in red. Right there. Uh, next one is uh, Spider-Gwen. It's from uh, Marvel Comics of uh, this year. It's uh, Spider-Gwen number four. This is, um, you can see the, uh, I believe it's Scott Mel, Mark Brooks, sorry, did the cover. And uh, he drew a little Spider-Man right there. You can see that he just uh, drew it on there, which I thought was pretty cool. And his signature is right at the bottom right there. I got this CGC, it came back a uh, 9.8. This one I bought about uh, two, three months ago at a comic book store here in San Diego. It's Thor number 137. I always like Silver Age comic books. This is the first appearance of Ulick. Um, actually, I just like the cover. You know, Jack Kirby, what can you say? He's one of the best artists, you know, Jack King Kirby. They named him King for a reason. I got a CGC, came back a 5.5. And if you see Stanley's signature, hopefully you'll see it right there at the bottom. Next one, this is from my own collections that I bought when it first came out, is Wolverine uh, number one, his own regular series comic books it's from November of 1988. Came back uh, 9.2. This one, I had it signed by uh, Chris Claremont. Signature, it's been authenticated. Can't really tell, read his signature, but that is his signature. You know, there was a uh, person there to prove that it was his, his signature. These are my uh, Uncanny X-Men's, and these are ones that, once again, uh, from my own personal collection. This is, this is from uh, April of 1977, when uh, they reintroduced the X-Men. Signed by uh, Stan Lee and uh, Chris Claremont right there. Came back at 7.0. Next one is all new X-Men, number 105. Also came back at uh, 7.0. Uh, once again, signed by uh, Stan Lee and Chris Claremont. Next up is X Men 126. Came back at 9.0. Um, almost all of these have been signed by uh, Stan Lee and Chris Claremont. Iconic cover of the new X Men. Next up is uh, Uncanny X Men number 130. It came back at 6.5. It's the uh, very first comic book with Dazzler. You can tell it was from the uh, early 80s and you know, still was in disco, Dazzler. A little bit closer so you can look at her outfit. Hopefully you'll see um, Stan Lee's signature right there and Chris Claremont. It's kind of hard to see, I apologize. Next up is Uncanny X-Men number 133. Uh, came back in, uh, came out in 1980. Uh, it's an iconic cover of a Stan Lee and the Hellfires Club. He's basically the last X-Men standing. Um, John Byrne cover. I mean, too bad he doesn't do conventions anymore. I'd love to get his signature on here also, but um, he doesn't do them anymore. So I uh, came back at 7.5. I did get Stan Lee's and Chris Claremont's. Next up is Uncanny X-Men number 135. This is when Jean Grey became the Phoenix and became Dark Phoenix and you know, losing control. Uh, came back uh, 7.0, X-Men number 135. Next up is X-Men number 136 where uh, Phoenix dies. And um, you know, one of the bigger deaths in the Marvel Universe. And she came back, but she died again. And 
<laughs> That's what it is with comic book heroes. They come and go, and hopefully they'll bring her back. They brought back a young Green Jay from the past, but I would like to see them bring back the one that you know died, and she hasn't come back yet, and hopefully one of these years she may. Uh, once again, this came back at 7.0. My last one is uh, Uncanny X-Men number 139 is when uh, Kitty Pride first joined the X-Men. I always like this cover. Uh, you can see her right in the middle right there, hopefully. And there's uh, Chris Claremont's signature and Stan Lee's signature. Uh, as I never mentioned before, yellow label means that it's been uh, authenticated and they have a representative there watching them sign. So yeah, it is their signature. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully I'll have another video in a couple months or when I get more comic books or uh, models or whatnots that I'd like to show to everybody. Thank you and have a good day. Salutations, everyone.